the strategy is that we uh, we're continuing with our um, uh, revolution and we're uh, with uh, um, with staying there in Tahrir Square <coughs> until the government looks into seriously considering the demands because all what happened until now is is just maneuvers, political maneuvers, not not more. First of all, it's not the American government's decision. Will the people in this square be ready to wait till September? That's the question. I don't think they're ready to wait. And the longer it's going to take, the uglier it will become. Well, that first was a member of an opposition group which met with Vice President Suleiman and the current regime this past weekend. Were there concessions? Will the military oversee change? And will protesters disperse in Tahrir Square? To find out, we check back in with Philip Rusk, Egyptian, German journalist and filmmaker. He's continued to cover this uprising despite numerous threats even to him personally. Philip, welcome back. Thanks for coming on the program. First, these quote-unquote negotiations this weekend are being made a lot of by the Egyptian regime. Who took part and what, could be, what can be said to have come of them? Anything? I mean, the negotiations really are just a form of propaganda to the international, the so-called international community to give the current regime some sort of cover uh, for their desire to hold on to power. That's, it's as simple as that. These kind of negotiations have absolutely nothing to do with the demands of the protesters in Tahrir Square who want not just Mubarak to go, but they want the entire regime to go. They want true change. They don't want the change of a face that's in power. They want a structural change in the country. And the, the parties that are willing to negotiate um, are, are, are not heeding this call of the protesters. The first to do so are the Muslim Brotherhood, who have taken, um, have, have historically taken this kind of a weak stance, where when it comes down to it, they are willing to negotiate with the regime. What about those who are described as opposition leaders who participated? Who were they? They're the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, there's another group called the, the Council of Wise Men, um, that are a number of independent businessmen um, that don't really, they don't represent the community in any form or manner. Um, they're simply representing uh, an elite that is already part of the uh, crony um, capitalism of, of the current regime. Mm. Here's what Omar Saliman, the vice president, had to say on ABC earlier this week about the protests. What do you think? These are young people who want this is a different Islamic, world. This, this is the Islamic current who push these people. Do you believe in democracy? For sure, everybody believes in the democracy. So do you but, not? But when you will do that? When, we will, when the people here will have the culture of democracy? So an Islamic current are pushing change from outside, he makes it sound like that, and democracy is fine, but Egypt's culture isn't ready for it yet. These don't sound like the words of a man who's going to oversee regime change. No, not at all. I mean, this kind of talk about that the country is not ready for democracy, the only reason you could say it's not ready is because for 30 years we've been living under a dictatorship that doesn't permit any sort of political opposition. In that sense, it's not ready. But if we're going to have change, we need to start changing now and, and learn as we go along. There isn't going to be a perfectly formed opposition in place as soon as the regime falls. Mm -hmm. But this kind of threat about an Islamic opposition taking over the country is, is purely uh, feeding to Western fears of, of an Islamist takeover of this country. Mm. The Muslim Brotherhood does not represent more than 8 or, or 10 percent of the population. They're not a, a massive threat to this political establishment. What about the growth of the power of the military? You had your own run in with them this week. No, I mean, the, the military is, is part of the regime. It, it's what props up the regime in its current condition. Um, it, it, there, there's no growth of power. The, the military is very substantially supported by the U.S. A lot of the, the funding, the subsidies that this country receives is actually military funding. And it's always been there as the stabilizer to the current regime. It's not growing, if anything. It's, it's shrinking. What about it's the important. freedom of journalists like yourself? What's happening there? Well, I mean, journalists have never been completely free. There are certain red lines. Um, once you cross them, you uh, are pounded on by, the, by this regime, whether you're, you're kidnapped, you're arrested, you 
have your equipment confiscated, and these kind of circumstances are what, what allow for this kind of uh, behavior. What's happened to you this week? No, I mean, there are certain days where I could not move out easily. What happened in Egypt is that there was mobs on the street. These mobs are directly, um, they're directly placed on the street by the police force. This is unusual to hear for Western ears, but, but in this country, the police actually hire thugs to roam the streets and attack demonstrators so that the police doesn't have to appear to be doing the dirty work in front of an international mm. press. Mm. That was the case, and that's why uh, my work was very limited for a few days. There was one day I was locked into a studio um, for uh, about an hour and a half as thugs stood in front of the door, pounding on the door, trying to break in, and it was only the military's intervention that, that stopped it. So any sense that that might be lessening at this point, the freedom of, for journalists might be growing? We've got about 10 seconds left. No, I don't think it's growing. It's just a different strategy of the regime. Right now, their strategy is trying to influence the protesters to continue life as normal. All right, Philip Brisk, thanks so much for joining us. We'll stay in touch with you. Thank you, Mike.